conditions which can be useful for the selection of these different types of emitters with respect to the, the emission uniformity. And uh, there is a, a table which has been provided by the American Society of Agriculture Engineers on the design standards for the emission uniformity. which gives the, the emission uniformity which is achievable or which is possible for different types of emitters and also with respect to the crop spacing, the field topography is another parameter which has been used in this particular information and the emission uniformity in percentage. Now, if the emitter type is a point source type, and your crop spacing is wide, in this case wide is taken as more than 4 meters. The field tropic topography is uniform and the uniform is the category where it has been, the slope has been taken as less than 2 percent, then the emission uniformity can be between 90 to 95 percent. If you have steep slope which is greater than 2 percent, your emission uniformity will reduce in comparison to the previous case. Now, in this case, everything else is same. You have the point source, you have the white, uh, white spacing uh, crop, but your field topography is uh, steep or undulating, then this will be the achievable uniformity uh, coefficient or emission uniform, uniformity as is known in this case. If you have closed spacing, which is uh, taken as less than 2 meters, the spacing between the crops is less than 2 meters, the spacing between the plants and you have a uniform field you can achieve the same value of uh, emission uniformity. But if it becomes a case of a steep topography, I am sorry, this is 85 to 90. So, if it is a steep topography with the close uh, crop spacing, you will have the emission efficiency of 80 to 90 percent. When you have line source, and a close crop spacing, normally in the case of line source, you will be using the line source mainly when you have the, the row crops. So, you will uh, in general you will find that the crop spacing is close in uh, all the cases when you use the line source 
So there is only one case when you have the close, close uh, crop spacing. If the topography is uniform, this if it is steep, then you have a lower level of emission uniformity. So this gives you a range that how the emission uniformity changes with respect to the, the various uh, conditions prevailing in the, and these are the general guidelines, the general uh, uh, average values which have been observed. How do you evaluate evaluation of emission uniformity? Because emission uniformity is something which you will have to go in for the evaluation of such uh, uniformity. What is the is a, is a field level uh, data which has to be evaluated and then you can find out what is the level of emission uniformity as we have seen in the other cases also, all the other uh, irrigation systems. You have to go in for these evaluations uh, where you do some experimentation and then come out with the, the relevant values and see, check for yourself whether those values are really prevalent in uh, the actual case or what you are getting is much different than what is what is uh, said to be achievable. Now, this you, if you uh, look at the overall layout which you have, you have the main line, you have the sub main, then you have the laterals, on the laterals you have the emitters. So when you go in for such an evaluation, you choose one sub main and on the sub main, if you have a sub main, choose at least four laterals on the sub main. You can have one lateral at the inlet point where uh, the very first point on the, the sub main, the very first, the immediately first lateral um, at the beginning of the sub, sub main and you choose one at the, the farthest point. You can take another one at uh, one third position and the fourth one at two third position. The idea is to have these laterals, the selected laterals well spaced so that you are not, you are not getting uh, the sample as you are trying to collect only some sample values. So these sample values should be representative values. They should be they should be rep representing the various conditions which are uh, prevailing in that setting. So for that purpose it is very essential that you choose the, uh, because what you are going to do, you are going to make measurements on what is the actual discharge. Only then you will like to, uh, you will see that what is the, the actual discharge which is being made available at different levels of the emitter. So you have you have tried to make a selection of those uh, those individual emitters in such a way that they are representing the average conditions, not the average conditions. Average conditions you will find out, but they are representing all the conditions, the, the maximum conditions, the minimum conditions, and the in between conditions also. Similarly, you can uh, uh, when you come to suppose you have selected four laterals. On each of the, these laterals, again, there will be variation when you go from one emitter to another em emitter because of the fact that, uh, as you know, that there are losses which are uh, uh, taking place. There is the 
this charge which is reducing. All those things which we have already discussed with respect to the sprinkler irrigation system is, is uh, happening here also. So, on, uh, uh, on each selected literal, again choose 4 emitters. And these four emitters, again, you will have one immediately at uh, the first one, the inlet, then the next one uh, at far end, there is the end of the lateral, and then two, one at one third position, and the second one as two third position. So you, are, you are repeating a similar um, pattern which you have done over the, the laterals. So, within the lateral also, you are, uh, you are trying to adopt the same strategy. Now ultimately, you, you have now four laterals and on each lateral you have four points, four emitters which are, which are, uh, which are selected. So, you have in all 16 emitters where the observations have to be uh, taken. The observation is only the you uh, measure the discharge, measure the volume of water collected in one minute. And that we will convert to find out what is the flow rate, what is the discharge. So this you uh, normally have uh, uh, the volume you collect in a graduated cylinder where you can directly see that how much is the volume collected and thereby you can find out what is the, what is the rate. So, the quantities which you will uh, like to um, find out is what is the minimum discharge since you have those 16 individual values, you can find out what is the minimum, Q minimum is, is required when you try to find out the, the emission uniformity. So, Q minimum is required, you can find out from there the Q average, you can again find out the average of those 16 individual values and all the other things are known. So, you can now from the sample, you can find out what is the, the value of uniformity or the emission uniformity. The general criteria which you normally uh, have which is which is uh, used that if you have more than 90 percent emission uniformity is excellent. If it is between 80 to 90 percent, good. 70 to 80 percent is fair, but anything less than 70 percent is poor. Now, this is the, this anyway you have uh, seen earlier, but this is a sort of level of uh, uh, general uh, level of acceptance which is given by this that if you have uh, something up to 80 percent of uh, emission uniformity which is reasonably good and uh, you can can accept that. Now, similarly, you have seen that in this particular case, the only 
something which is uh, not not known as the 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 value of uh, the coefficient of variation can also be computed basically uh, using these individual values. You can find out the coefficient of variation. But if you if you don't want to indulge in all the all that, you want to have a order of magnitude or a simplified way of finding out what is the uniformity, what is the level of uniformity which you are achieving. You can also use a parameter which is known as the discharge variation. And this is a much simplified expression than what we have been discussing so far. It just gives you what is the what is the Q maximum, what is the Q minimum, and what is the the level of Q variation. And this is again in percentage. So the Q variation in percentage, a simplified way of uh, finding out this, can also be used if you don't want to indulge in all the other uh, the, the, the detailed calculations which you are uh, performing when you are finding out the, the emission uniformity. You can um, also use this as an indicator. So in this particular case, everything is uh, defined. We don't have any uh, any term which is this is the the discharge variation. And the general criteria is that if your uh, discharge variation is less than 10 percent, the desirable 10 to 20 percent is acceptable, but anything less than, uh, anything greater than 20 percent is not acceptable. So, if you are if you're trying to find out these, the, the discharge variation, in terms of discharge variation, this is the, the range which is uh, the general criteria which is used. Now similarly, when you talk in terms of the relationship between the emitted discharge and the operating pressure, let's call it H, the general expression This is, the, this is the relationship between uh, the discharge and the operating pressure. Now, X is the, the emitter discharge exponent. This exponent is also given by the manufacturer. You will find that uh, the value of this X will also be made available, but this x is also a function of the flow regime and k is an empirical factor. Now, the value of x varies from 0 to 1. You have a value of x as 0 when you have the emitters which are the pressure compensating. You get a value of uh, 1 for those emitters which are in a laminar flow regime and a value close to 0.5 is obtained for emitters which are in top blend flow regime. So, 
So in general, you will uh, you will you can uh, you can uh, uh, derive from this that the higher the value of x, you'll have to take more care in terms of uh, the fact that if the the value of x will be higher, then a small pressure variation can make a lot of variation in the discharge. So that is that is very is the indicator that if you have a, lev a level of x or the value of x which is higher, you will have to be very careful when you are looking at the variation of uh, discharge over the lateral, and uh, uh, you have to you have to check you have to make thorough checks that what is the what is the variation which you are getting in actual case. Let's now go on to the the lateral hydraulics. Now we want to find out the final the, the final aspect of uh, design that what are the actual uh, losses. And now you want to to find out the the pump requirement, and for that you'll have to find out how much are the losses, what are the pressure requirements, how the pressure varies over the total network, the 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 relationships might be slightly different, but the philosophy is the same as you have in the case of a sprinkler irrigation system. So I won't go into the details, but in this case. The total dynamic head which is required, the principle is going to be similar. The only thing is that in this particular case, there will be some additional things which might uh, create more uh, hindrance in terms of uh, the loss. For example, in this case, the losses which will be prevalent because of the, the, the other uh, equipment like the filter unit you have more number of filter units in this because you want still the, the water which is more clearer because of the fact that in this case the clogging is much more problematic. So any pressure which has to be lost in those in those individual equipments has to be catered for in terms of the local uh, the, the, the total requirement which is required at any level whether it's the pump level or whether it's the the, the, the procedure will remain same. You will start from the, the farthest point and you will reach up to the pump and find out how much is the, the total requirement at the pump level. As far as the other aspect of uh, uh, using the, the factor F to take into consideration the effect of reduced discharge is again the similar which we have already um, looked into in detail in this in the case of sprinkler irrigation system. But let's try to go through the uh, some other aspects. For example, in this case again, the head loss. Um, for a particular lateral, the head loss is found out using the Darcy Westbridge equation, which is more common in this particular case. And this is the, the expression to be used for. Uh, Using the Darcy Westbridge equation uh, for finding out the the head loss. This is the friction head loss. Assuming that there is no loss of uh, discharge for the total lateral, so this HF is the friction head loss along the lateral. Uh, with no discharge. If 
you have, if there's no discharge through the emitters, that means there's only the, the pure pipe flow, as we have seen earlier. Then, this is the, the expression, where all the other terms we already know. We know that this is the, the friction factor, and this friction factor has to be computed using the, the proper equation, depending on the which regime you are in. And this is the friction factor. There's the length of the lateral and expressed in meters. Q is the total lateral flow in liters per hour and D is the lateral diameter and this is expressed in millimeters. So again we have uh, earlier also we have seen that to account for the actual uh, friction head loss we had introduced a factor F if we call that as actual that is F times HF and this F this F is the Christensen friction factor and we have uh, um, in detail we have dealt with that that how to compute the F that procedure will remain same and this particular case the only major difference is that in this particular case there are other losses which are which can take a very significant uh, uh, value which are those losses up to this place there is no problem it is the same procedure but in uh, this particular case we cannot ignore the other losses which are the losses uh, due to the emitter and the other connectors these losses can be the order of magnitude can again uh, be very high that we have uh, just said but more than that it also takes uh, uh, it also depends a lot on how the emitter has been used if the emitter has been used online the loss will be different if the emitter has been used in line the loss will be different so in general the emitter which is used in line it will create much more higher loss than the emitter which is used online Some experimentation has been done where uh, it has been seen that the inline emitter can have loss which is around five times higher uh, than the the loss in the lateral without emitters. So it can even surpass the, the total loss of the emitter uh, when, uh, the, in the lateral when there are no emitters, that is the, the HF which you have just found. When you have the inline emitters, the loss, the additional loss can be 400 percent higher. Now to account for this additional loss, what can be done? There are uh, various ways by which you can handle that. 
but the designers have found this the the simplest possible way they have uh, found is to find out what is the the additional length what is the equivalent length equivalent length which uh, will produce the same level of retardance or what is the equivalent length which will which should be taken along with the the original length to account for this loss so the in that there is a, there's a there is a very indirect way of uh, handling this uh, uh, the connector and the emitter loss but it's quite effective and the equivalent length to account for the friction due to emitters and connectors is called le expressed in meters and the expression is used to find out this equivalent length equation what are the various uh, parameters these we have defined earlier this is the lateral uh, diameter this is in millimeters and q is the the flow rate in liters per hour h e is the emitter and connector friction loss and meters now this this uh, emitter and connector friction loss has to be measured separately in the field setup you you'll have to find out how much is the loss under uh, uh, for a specific emitter or any other connector which you are using and that experimentation has to be uh, And there are many emitters where uh, the friction loss, the the connector loss, and the emitter loss are not known. Uh, people are making that uh, data available. Even the manufacturers have started uh, looking into those things. So once that is known, then you can find out what is the equivalent length, which has to be increased, by which the the original length has to be increased, and then you can use the combined length and the the other uh, uh, previous expressions to find out how much is the how much are, how much is the change because of this uh, additional uh, head loss which is which is because of these connectors and the emitters so that can be taken care of okay otherwise all the other details remain same you can uh, again you can look at the the worst possible lateral or any lateral which is uh, which you feel is the critical one and if you have a a computer uh, system where uh, the program is there you can check each and every lateral and find out what are the the whether the the extreme uh, critical points they are getting sat satisfied uh, value of discharges or the pressures there are quite sufficient and those pressures can be used to find out the the, the pressure requirement at the other locations of the system now that in general gives us a reasonable uh, insight into what are the various uh, uh, design procedures
then there are some other related uh, topics for this the specific system uh, in this case the filter unit is a very important unit and the filtration is is basically requ required because of the fact that the ammeters get clogged the clogging in the ammeters is due to various reasons it can be due to the the suspended solids it can be due to the physical uh, particulates the clogging can also take place because of chemical precipitation or biological activity it can be either bacterial activity and the algae formation so they, they, they are the different uh, a range of reasons for clogging and that is the reason that you will have to use a very high level of uh, uh, in fit the, the the filtration uh, process there are many filters which are commonly used they, they are uh, they belong to different classes there are some filters which are uh, called the media filters where you are using the sand or some other uh, the gravels same type of filters which you use for uh, the sewage treatment and um, these type of uh, filters which are sand filters which are quite useful and the, the quantity of water which can be treated that can also be much larger because of the the um the infiltration rates which are prevalent and it can also uh, remove the uh, not only the sediments but it can also remove some of the biological uh, uh, elements which might be going through the the water so in the case of a sand filter a typical sand filter you might have uh, uh, such a arrangement that you have you have a unit where you are uh, this is the the entry of water water comes through this and these are the various uh, levels where you can have the control on the if this is the portion which is having the filter medium uh, as a sand so in the normal operation the water will move in this direction 
come here and then pass through the filter unit and move out. So this is the clean this is the clean water. This is coming out of the, the outlet point. And this part is used when you want to have the backwash of this uh, filter because all the material which is the, the uh, different types of uh, particles which are getting accumulated on the surface of the, uh, the filter, they, will, they can be backwashed by sending the water closing this, this side, sending the water now from here and then the water uh, uh, will, while passing through the sand, will remove the, the particles which are deposited and it can be sent out of this. So this is the backwash water. Now this process can be repeated as often as is required depending on the, the capacity of the filter and the type of water which you are using, how much, how much deposit is being made in this uh, particular area and, uh, and that is why if you remember that you have uh, the pressure gauges also which are provided before the the filter and after the filter unit. So you can calibrate that in terms of the pressure difference also. If the, the filter unit gets clogged, the, the pressure variation will also increase. So if the pressure uh, variation is more than 70 kilopascal, then in general you can say that you require the the filter um, uh, to be cleaned. These days there are uh, there are many um, new equipment which have come because the difficulties which were uh, earlier uh, being faced by the, the operators. They have a dual, uh, they have a twin system. The, the filter can have two chambers one chamber can be used when the other chamber is uh, being um, um, cleaned through the backwash uh, process so that you don't have to you don't have to stop your uh, system you can do that when the system is is remaining on and the last time because if um, you have chosen a system where you cannot wait for let's say for more than uh, one day for the next irrigation to start. Otherwise, you will uh, you might not be able to complete your total area in the desired irrigation interval. So, in that situation, each lost day can be very detrimental, can be very problematic. So, you can uh, either use a filter unit which needs very little cleaning or is very quick to to be cleaned or you use such a system where you have uh, a standby which is inbuilt so that you don't have to stop the functioning only because of the fact that you have to clean this filter unit. Then you have the other type of filter units which are uh, quite uh, equally popular. They are the screen filters. In the case of screen filters, you use uh, for filtering the, the wire mesh and uh, you might have such a situation that you have, um, here you have a core which is, which is having a, a mesh. Um, 
this case the water may be entering from the end this is the entry point what goes through the and then so this is the exit the exit point so the water when it moves through the the filter unit uh, it can uh, is not as simple the the they can be a, a situation where it, it will move the, the length of the uh, the segment which it has to pass through it can be forced to the water the, the, the water can be forced to pass through that uh, total segment so that the cleaning is much better and much proper and then uh, the water the clean water will come through now in this case again uh, this is the the outlet which can be used when you you clean the filter and you want to flush the whole uh, debris out of the this uh, wire mesh portion of which is the filter unit, filter uh, portion in this particular case the sizes of these meshes can vary depending on the requirement depending on the quality of the water which you are using so that in general is uh, um the the very brief details on the filter units and they 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 can be another uh, type of filter uh, unit where you are using the the concepts of uh, the centrifugal uh, force there you you try to churn the water and uh, if you have only the sus the suspended solids which you are uh, which are heavier than water that can be forced to settle down and uh, through that those type of uh, filter units you can only remove the sus suspended particles uh, which are not which are not exactly suspended particles they are in transition they can be they can be forced to settle down so those type of filters you might use as the primary filters which uh, are only the first level filters then when you come closer to the the sub mains you use the secondary level filters which are more effective which can be uh, which can ensure that all the other debris all the other uh, particles which can clog the uh, uh, emitters they can be removed so with that uh, i will uh, close this topic on the drip irrigation system if there are any questions i can ah uh, yes the question is that whether the the sand filter and the screen filter they can be used simultaneously they are filters which are having both these things put in the the same uh, uh, segment also but they can be they can be used uh, the the screen filters can be used as a primary filter because screen filters are not as effective as the sand filters can be so that uh, is basically uh, which filter should be used where and how many filters you have to use will depend on the quality of water which you are using if the quality of water is very poor you might have to use uh, um, a series of filters you might have to use even a filter which is uh, before the pump unit because that can also if uh, the water is really bad you won't like the pump to be damaged so you you might uh, use a filter even before the the pump so it, it all depends on it all um, as is uh, dependent on what type of quality of water you are uh, you are having at your disposal and uh, uh, in some cases you might find that you have to analyze the water if your uh, your quality is susceptible or if there are uh, situations where uh, 
biological uh, activity is quite active, you might have to go into the depth and the details because you realize one one main aspect that in this particular case, if even if some of the emitters are not functional, you are having a big problem because the emitter is ultimately the 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 last device which will let the water move from uh, the system from the, the lead till onto the the field and the pressure once you go past the emitter there's a very drastic difference there's a drastic drop in uh, the pressure from the the point which is just upstream of the emitter and when you go and the water goes outside the emitter let me tell you that the water is almost at the atmospheric pressure when it comes out of the emitter. So, if you have uh, any situation where, because the, the pressures are really very low, so in most of the cases, even if there is a very small uh, chance of uh, having any of these things affecting the emitter, it will have a tendency to clog. Because uh, there are days when you are uh, when you are not using the system, even if you are letting the water uh, stand for two three days, as we have seen that uh, two days is as a normal uh, duration, which when the, the emitter might not be functional. So within that much period, if the algae formation is there, then you have it. Because then it's going to you won't even know the the other uh, major problem is that you won't even know that which are the emitters which are not functioning, because there is no uh, think of a situation where you have many, many hectares of uh, area and the number of emitters can be really run into uh, hundreds for even a small area. How many of those emitters you can physically see? And even the automatic controls are not possible because they will be, they'll be making uh, a very, um, and the whole system very, very expensive. So, those sensing the remote sensing and uh, the, or the automatic uh, sensing mechanism is not is not possible. It might be feasible, but is not. Uh, it might be possible, but is not feasible. You can you can uh, sense how much is uh, the water going past the meter, but that is at a cost. This is not permissible within the present uh, circumstances. So you have to be very careful uh, at this stage that. The water which you are sending is not, by any chance, is not clogging those emitters. Okay. Thank you much.